You ready to go do some chores? Hey. You wanna go do some chores? Let's go get some things done. Good morning, everyone. We have some big plans coming up in the next week. And I got a lot of stuff to do around here on the farm. So we decided to shotgun getting pigs at the last second. Um, same thing on our minds, it's not the same as everyone else out there. There's food supply right now. Um, we're feeling the pressure. Grocery bills are exploding right now. And we want to take control over some of that. So we decided we're going to get pigs. Not only are we going to get pigs, but we're going to get some pigs for friends and family as well. So stay tuned. We've got a lot of big things coming up. So, part of farm life, you come out with a plan and everything changes because you see other things that need to be done. And if you have ADD like I do, that makes it that much harder. As well as filming yourself or trying to open a gate one handed. Come on, babies. Let's go. So last night when I was checking on the ewes, I heard this thing grounding. I can see a little arc. That brings up a good point. If you're dealing with your fence, constantly grounding out. Check it out at night. Kind of give you a clue and an indicator. You can see it flashing in the dark. And that would be my problem. I tied that knot and I left it too long. And now it's grounding out on that post. So, I'm going to have to shut it down, not a big deal. Shut it down, trim it off. Not a big deal, but it's definitely going to kill my charge. So, noticed since last night, and this third wire here seems to be loose. I'm really liking this electrical tape. It's been super easy to install. Uh, not looking forward to moving it. Probably going to be a little bit more difficult than... Uh, our electronets but I don't think I, I need to really I'm just gonna continue to build a perimeter around our property with this electric uh, tape but um, it's a lot cheaper than the electric net and uh, the sheep seem to respect it believe it or not a lot better than the electric net we were finding with our electric net we were coming out here twice we've come out here and found our sheep um, half dead almost where they had gotten their head stuck in it and with this particular breed uh, several of our use have horns and uh, the sheep will poke their head through and when they go to back out it catches because it goes in just fine but aerodynamics it snags on the way back so um, twice I've come out here and uh, found our ewes out here tangled up in the mess and uh, in the process of freeing them up destroyed um, two different panels of electric net at almost 200 bucks a pop now so uh, they're not cheap they're about 164, 165 feet, if I remember correctly, long. And that's where I can get a roll of this half inch tape for about 79 bucks at our local feed store. So, and it covers 1,300 feet versus 160. Granted, you gotta have these little posts and or uh, T posts or whatever kind of posts you're using, uh, but that's up to you and how much money you wanna spend there. We're planning on moving this around. This isn't our permanent fence, obviously, but it gets our sheep out here and gets them grazing. So um, it's been a big success so far. We're, we're on about week two, I think, and we've had no escapees yet. So it's off <laughs> for her sake. <laughs> yeah, so today, real quick, I, I fixed the ground. Um, may or may not have got that on camera, but uh, my next step here is just tighten this third wire. I don't know why it's, it's loose, but... Um, Again, it's, this stuff's real easy to work with. 
and here I'm just wrapping it around on itself and uh, just one wrap seems to have straightened it out I just don't want them getting too close to each other so I love working with this stuff so far hey quit sleeping on the job we got work to do eat up come on let's go okay So, in light of everything that's going on, um, we uh, we got our, our first sheep um, right when COVID hit. We've seen the toilet paper <laughs> fly off the shelf. I was thinking big picture and long term. Yeah, losing toilet paper is scary, but what was more scary to me and my family was not being able to provide for my family, potentially. I didn't know what our food outlook was going to be and all my fears are continuing to come true you know we're seeing our grocery bills skyrocket and for our small family and um, I wanted to make sure that we had a way to sustain um, two of our staple foods here on our farm are rabbits and these sheep behind us and part of the reason why I chose this particular breed of sheep these are called Icelandic sheep is uh, they're primitive sheep. They're not like most breeds out there. Uh, they haven't been messed with much by mankind because we're really good at screwing things up and screwing with things that we shouldn't be screwing with. But um, at any rate, these sheep are phenomenal. Uh, we had goats when we first got these sheep and uh, they ran circles around our goats as far as what they ate versus versus goats. Now, granted, they won't really eat the big woody stems when they get older, but the new growth, they definitely eat the new growth canes, they eat. Um, but our thistles, we had six foot tall thistles out here, I kid you not. And these guys ate them down to about less than a half inch tall. There's nothing but just the stub of the stalk or the stump of the thistle. So, hands down, I was impressed with um, what these guys were willing to do. They're awesome at foraging. Um, they eat the, the brush <laughs> and the vegetation too. We're slowly regaining our land back. Um, they're like having a lawnmower and a brush hog all at the same time. But um, let's talk about feed costs. Uh, hay in our area over here in the Pacific Northwest, Western Washington, um, we're, we're paying anywhere from about 20, eight to thirty two dollars a bale right now and it's only going up and these fuel prices are going to skyrocket it and uh this last week we have had a heck of a time finding any hay um we for about the last week everyone has been out of hay and this has been absolutely scary we're lambing right now as you can see behind us we've got three little babies over there and five more expected to drop babies any day and our mothers need to be fat and happy right now and uh, we're, we're literally down to two bales of hay and uh, we found a place today we're gonna go try and pick up some hay uh, pretty good deal actually um, he, he gets his I believe from Eastern Washington but um, this has been a wake-up call why we got this breed um, this breed and let's talk about them a little bit because they're such a primitive breed I don't have to grain them. I choose to grain them, and I give them grain as a filler. Um, and you know, I feed them high quality, you know, alfalfa or orchard grass or a mix. But I don't have to. And I know, should we run completely out of hay, we can sustain. We have enough grass here. We have three acres here, and that will sustain the size flock that we have as long as we manage our land appropriately and rotationally graze them. The other great thing about this breed is they're a fiber sheep. They have great wool. Um, and this is one of the few breeds, uh, and the only one I can think of off the top of my head, that you can actually shear twice a year. Most breeds you shear once a year. So that's twice the wool output. And they're a smaller breed, but they're a high quality meat. It's really sought after. And they are a milk sheep. Uh, not many breeds you can milk. So if we're in a pinch, we now have milk, we have meat, we have fiber. So wh why wouldn't you want this breed? And you can small scale farm with these guys. So they are a staple on our farm for sure. Now I've talked about getting pigs. Um, yeah, I would love to throw a pig in my, my freezer and be able to sustain off one whole pig for at least a year with my family. Uh, but at the end of the day, I have to feed pigs grain. And, um, you know, some may argue that, but if you want a good 
heavy hog, you're going to feed grain. Um, you can. I've heard people out there pasture raising them. I'm not saying you can't. We're new to this. I'm. This is a learning adventure. These guys, I can. They can live off grass. So if we're hurting, they can just sit out here and graze. Same thing goes with our rabbits. Um, should I not be able to get rabbit feed for them? Hey baby, um, we can feed them grass if we're in a pinch, and just go out there and hand pick grass for them every morning. That's a little bit more work, but we can sustain and hold out as long as we can keep everybody fed with grass. So really consider that with the market and everything that's going on right now is if I get these animals and I implement these animals on my small farm or large farm, you know, uh, look at the times that we're in and none of us have a crystal ball. And um, can you continue to feed those animals? I've been talking with a lot of farmers lately and they're talking about um, slaughtering all or majority of their animals because of feed shortage right now which is really sad um you know so we're in some difficult times and you got to make some tough decisions but you really need to be thinking high altitude what is the big picture and longevity um, am i going to be able to find feed uh, in our pig situation we're going to be going down to the feed store the grain store and uh, buying bulk and i want to buy my food now all at once or at least as much as possible to make sure that we're okay so um, i'm trying to think long term because the toilet paper shortage two years ago is now turning into our food shortage and that's scary so anyways Hang out, stick around, and uh, watch what we're doing today. And we're going to be building a pig pen today and little things around here. Make sure the girls are settled in and uh, throw on fresh new green grass. So, welcome to this episode of MTV Cribs. This is my humble abode. Uh, this is where we've been living the last couple, no, not really. Actually, this is where we want to do our pigs. So, uh, this building looks terrible it's because it is terrible, but uh, hopefully it will do for pigs. Um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. We got to gut all this trash out of here. A lot of the stuff was left behind um, from the previous people that lived here. Some of it's our stuff. Um, but a good majority of it is just garbage. So I'm going to be over the next few days cleaning this place out, gutting it. Um, I got a lot of um, old OSB. I got a little water damage while we were building the house. So um, I'm going to use it to double up these walls um, on the inside of the studs that are here on the wall and add a little bit of sheer strength. I mean, this building looks terrible, but um, if I can sure it up with some fresh lumber, maybe sister some up with these beams, uh, make sure we get through another year or two. This is just temporary, but there's already a concrete floor here, and I'm going to take full advantage of that. Um, from what I've been watching and been told, it's you don't get the smell associated with pigs as bad, nearly as bad, with concrete floor versus if you let them root and turn something into a swamp and a mud pit. So um, this way we're going to lay down a good layer of um, pine shavings and uh, just clean them regularly so we don't have that terrible smell that comes along with pigs ideally I'll let you guys know how it really goes in the end so this will uh, make or break or dictate whether we'll do pigs again uh, but this is going to be a temporary setup get our feet wet and see if we like raising pigs how hard it is how expensive it is and uh, this will be a good kickstart um, I want to mention a, another thing too um, pigs from everything I've seen chew on just about anything and everything. And so, like I said, we're gonna double up these walls with the OSB and um, I'm planning on running a couple strands of that electrical tape, the same tape you've seen me use in my other videos with our sheep. Um, we're gonna put some hot wire uh, with the tape uh, down to keep them off that wall from rubbing or chewing on the wall. Cause uh, the last thing I want is a 300 pound pig rubbing on the side of our humble abode here and knocking it down. So, uh, stay tuned, thanks.
So here's what $230 worth of hay looks like. I got both orchard and alfalfa. Each one of these bales will probably last us about three to four days, depending on how much time we spend grazing. Thank you.